Hey, what's going on, everybody? Movie fan here, and uh, you know what? We're just rolling right through my genres, going through my DVD collection, genre by genre. And uh, we are we did comedy. Now we are up <whistles> crime. Look at the little robber there. He's fucking running and shit. Dude just stole some money. That, that's 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 crime right there. Now I got in the conversation once with uh, all my subscribers, you know, what cost, and I get, this, this is a conversation that, you know, when I'm like defining genres for my collection, you know, I think I've already talked about this before, but, you know, it's just, to me, like, what feels right. So to me, I wanted a crime, because I mean, this could easily go into drama, easily. But to me, like a crime movie, like what, you know, everybody's like, well, why isn't Lethal Weapon in the crime section? Why is that action? kind of takes, you know, that's more on the cop side of things. Crime movies are usually more on the criminal side of things. Like, your main characters are usually the criminals of the movies. And there is, like, an action overtone. So, without any further ado, here we go. My, uh, crime section. My cr crime, uh, collection. Selection. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. As always, the fam does these videos right before he goes to bed, so he's a little tired. All right, at first we've got Casino. Uh, not my favorite Scorsese film, but uh, damn good. Damn good. I enjoy it. There's a few Scorsese I don't have. Like, I really, uh, like, like a couple of the big ones. Taxi Driver, I should own. Mean Streets, I should own. I don't. I've yet to come across them cheap enough. So, boom. Casino, good movie. Uh, this one kind of iffy on the crime. I'm not going to lie. Like, as I'm looking at it now, like, this... Is definitely more drama, but fuck it. Uh, Catch Me If You Can. Uh, this is a surprise movie for me. I honestly, this was during, like, when I was younger, I hated Leo DiCaprio because I was like, you know, like, I'm a little fat fuck who's just like, fuck that pretty boy. Fucking Titanic. So I just naturally just did not like him for no reason other than that. Dude's a damn good actor. He's one of my favorite actors working today. And anyway, but this is, this is like, this is like fluff. When I first, you know, saw the commercials, I'm like, I don't give a shit. Like, Steven Spielberg, I respect the man. He's just not a draw for me. Like, I don't know. Like, I will, you'll, you'll never see me like, I can't wait for a new Steven Spielberg. I just don't give a shit. Like, he's good. He's good. But I'm just not, he, I don't know. He just, he's done nothing for me. So, this movie just had nothing going for it at all for me. Uh, it was given to me. I watched it one night. And it's really good. It's a damn good movie. If you had the mindset that I have, you're like, this just looks like two hours of fluff. Uh, it's not. It's actually a damn good movie, so recommend it. All right, in my opinion, this is where the people are throwing punches at the Phantom here. Uh, my favorite Scorsese movie ever. I mean, number one, The Departed. Dude, and I know, I can, don't get me wrong, Goodfellas is right fucking there. Oh, dude, it's like, it's so close. Like, they're so neck and neck. Like, fucking, they're like this. But this, it's just, the part is a little bit higher. Uh, the reason why, it just, dude, it's just, it's so much more intense. I think story-wise, and more of like that epic feel, Godfather has, or sorry, Goodfellas has it. Because, I mean, it does kind of span, you know, a couple decades, a few decades. But this, to me, is just a more entertaining movie and just so well acted. So many great actors. In fact, I didn't even care for Mark Wahlberg until I watched this. Like, I just, I, he just, another one, I'm just like, I ain't fucking watching him. And then I watched this, I'm like, holy shit, the guy can act. And then I was like, all right, Marky Mark, let's do this. I watched some of his other movies. I'm not, like, I'm not really huge on Mark Wahlberg movies, but the dude's awesome. Like, he's a great actor. He just does some shit sometimes. Uh, but yeah, dude, fucking brilliant. All right, this is what I've seen since I was a kid. I've always loved it. Dog Day Afternoon. Oh, dude, this fucking, it's awesome. That's all I gotta say. You wanna see a heist movie? Boom. Just stop right there. That's all you need right there. All right, up next, the trilogy, the Godfather trilogy. Yeah, dude, these are just perfect. Like, I know that's cliche to say, like, the Godfather is just a perfect movie. It really is. It so fucking is. In fact, one, one or two, if they, even on TV, where it's, you know, edited, and condensed for time, and there's fucking commercials. Like, I get myself caught watching. Like, I'll be flipping through, like, holy shit, golf is on. And I'll just remote down, and I'll start watching the damn thing. No, when I got my DVD, I can, I can go up and get it right here, but for some reason, I'm just, I'm like, oh shit, golf you know. 
Yeah, awesome. Three is not bad. Three gets some shit. I like three. It's fucking nowhere near one and two. But yeah, Golf Art Trilogy right there. Highly recommend for anybody in their collection. All right. Just mentioned it. Good fellas. Dude, I mean, don't get me wrong. I liked them far more. This is still fucking top notch. Five stars. Five out of five. Fucking brilliant. What happened to Ray Liotta? That's what I want to know. Like, how does, like, you, you get something in the morning and he's just like, what the fuck did I do? Like, what did I do wrong? He's like, I used to do fucking good fellas and now I'm doing, like, Wild Hogs, Youth and Revolt. Like, I don't condone suicide, but Ray, you're doing something wrong, buddy. I'm just saying, at this point, maybe, maybe suicide, you know, I don't know. All right, up next, we got, all right. I'm going to show you, I'm going to mention the title. It is The Great uh, St. Louis Bank Robbery. Boom. Now, you're looking at this. Look at this. This ain't even like a regular thin case. This is like paper thin. In fact, you don't even know I have it when it's in my collection. Only I know I have it. Because it's so fucking thin. You're thinking to yourself, why? Was I really on that kind of a bender? Like I did like, you know, my other thin ones. I was jonesing for a fucking DVD. And I'm like, all right, I'm in the dollar store. And I'm looking. It wasn't even like that. You know where I got this? I ordered it through a catalog. Because the paragraph it has on the back this, you know, to describe the movie was the same paragraph they had to describe the movie in the catalog. And I'm just going gonna, gonna to give you the first five words of this pair. I'm not going to read the whole thing. If you already know the movie, great. But the first five words that they describe this movie is, is long before Tarantino's Reservoir Dogs. And I was like, fuck it, I'm buying it. That's all it is. It was 99 cents. And I love it because it's not even like held in there right. Like it's just in a fucking sleeve and that shit gets all scratched up and everything. It's ridiculous. And you know what though? It has Stephen Queen. Pretty good movie. Pretty good movie. Uh, yeah, it's a botched heist. It's, a, it's based on a true story, and it shows like a bank robbery gone wrong. And I, I like it. It's not bad. So don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, I went through that whole thing, but I, I bought it for like the wrong reasons, I guess. Like I was like, I'm just buying because Tarantino's name's on it. Even though he had nothing to do this movie at all, I'm gonna buy it. Turned out to be not bad. All right, here's a movie I don't really hear much anybody talk about, and I loved it. Ice Harvest. Oh, dude, the Ice Harvest. I love this movie. I think everybody does great in it. I think people were expecting it to be more a comedy. Because if you watch the trailer, it does kind of like, it's a wacky kind of movie. We got Billy Bob Thornton just being Billy Bob Thornton again. And it's nice. It's actually, I mean, it's just, I don't know, it's damn good. I don't know. I love it. Damn good movie right here. Check that out. This one, they just blew me away when I first watched it. I've loved it. I've seen it like so many times since then. In Bruges. Dude, it, I, just stop right here. If you haven't seen this, I know like I tend to be more of a horror movie guy, but I'm thinking right now, if, you did, if, you're, if you're judging this by the cover, don't do it, man. Fucking watch this. Awesome. In Bruges. You're Colin Farrell. Even if you're not a Colin Farrell fan, which I am, but if you're not a Colin Farrell fan, this could win you over right here, dude. Oh, I love it. It's just, it's so... It's so, like, offensive, but not really. Like, I can't explain it any better than that. I don't know, dude. Fucking love it. it has, and for your horror guys, it has Brennan Gleason in it from 28 Days Later. So, boom. All right. I'm not going to lie. I'm hardcore on a Quentin Tarantino's Nuts. So, boom. Jackie Brown. Fucking love this movie. It is my least favorite Tarantino film. And even when it's my least favorite, it's still brilliant. Like, it's just fucking awesome. Like, being least favorite don't mean shit. It's still... My least favorite Tarantino film is like way better than like almost most films. Uh, yeah, Jackie Brown, damn good movie. I think people got tore. I, yeah, this gets lost in the shuffle. I know why. Because everybody watched it right for Pulp Fiction. I knew ahead of time, don't go into expecting Pulp Fiction, so I was okay with that. Did not bother me. All right, here's another movie. This could be considered a Tarantino ripoff movie, and it pretty much is, but uh, it's still good. Lucky Number 11. Yeah, definitely stills like the. Slick, cool dialogue, but it's a damn good movie. It really is. Josh Hartnett, I'm a big fan. Uh, Morgan Freeman. I don't really care for Ben King, uh, Ben Kingsley or uh, Stanley Tucci, but uh, Bruce Willis. My boy Bruce is in there. Boom. Fucking John McClane. Uh, damn good movie. Saw in theaters like two or three times. I mean, I didn't pay for it. I want to work there, but yeah, damn good movie. All right, here's another one that was like a kind of surprise hit for me, and I loved it. The Matador. Dude, Pierce Brobman's great in this. Like, post-Bond, uh, this is it right here. It's just, it's great. And I'm not a big Greg Kinnear fan either, and I like him in this. I don't know. I thought it was a damn good movie. Kind of, it's kind of, it is a little more on the comical side. 
but I don't know. It fits into my crime section pretty damn good. All right, up next. Okay, got to roll the sleeves up on this one. It's not a bad movie. It's not bad at all. It just could have been so much fucking better. Natural Born Killers. Okay, here's the thing. Like, okay, I was on a huge Tarantino terror. Fucking tearing it up. Like, and I, I got, like, a late start on Tarantino. In fact, uh, when Pulp Fiction first came out, I remember my mom was all over it. She's like, this is the greatest movie ever. And the only scene I clicked on, like, literally, like, I walked in as my parents were watching it, and it's, just, it's the dance sequence. Now, if you are a young boy, I was probably, like, fifth grade, sixth grade when this came out, and you come in, and the only scene you see is fucking John Travolta dancing, you can't help but, like, want to make fun of it and just walk away forever. And that's what I did. I was like, fuck this. It wasn't until, and I'm talking, I mean, I'm ashamed to even admit this, but it wasn't until, like, after I was, like, out of high school, even. And I fucking came across the uh, trailer for Reservoir Dogs. And I'm like, what the fuck is this, you know? And at this point, Kill Bill's out. So everybody's kind of, like, tearing it up right now, Kill Bill. And I'm like, Reservoir Dogs, holy shit. So... The trailer, you know, tore me. So I got into that. So I, I said, watch that. What, you know, now actually I hit him in order. Uh, like, like his big ones. And then I kind of caught like the little ones, like uh, four rooms I caught later on. And you check that. Anyways, so fucking, you know, I get through all that. And now I realized that he actually wrote shit, you know, to get the money. You know, I, did, I, I once again, I was like hanging on his nuts big time. It's so, like I read his entire bio and everything. And I was like, oh, that's War Killers. I got to check this out. So I've heard of the movie. Everybody's heard of it, obviously. I've never seen it. And I watch it. And I'm like, it's not bad. God damn it, if Tarantino could have directed it. And that's, that's, that's my review, if, if, if only Tarantino could have directed it. Guess what, there's going to be another review like that coming up soon too, but uh, we'll, we'll wait for that. Alright, speaking of Tarantino, boom, Pulp Fiction. Oh shit, dude, love this fucking movie. Uh, however, it, it's my number two on my Tarantino list. Oh, I know, I know, fucking blasphemy. Uh, and I love it, don't get me wrong, it's fucking gold. It's fucking, it's a masterpiece, it really is. But I prefer this one right here. That's right, Reservoir Dogs. Holy shit, dude, so fucking quotable. And dude, I don't know, man, like this to me just, this is fucking it, like, to me this is the greatest Tarantino movie ever. Like I am just, I love this fucking movie. It's just, it's brilliant, it's gold, there's no touching it. And, I mean, it's so raw and real, like I don't, dude, I don't know. I, I can literally blow this movie just nonstop. I won't, but dude, love this fucking movie. All right, up next, we got the original, Scarface. Uh, naturally, you know, and I'm not like trying to be like a crime poser, but generally, I do like the big heavyweights. Godfather, Goodfellas, anything Tarantino, Godfather, Scarface, you know. So, like, I've already seen these before, and then, of course, I heard about this one. Then I'm watching The Aviator and uh, fucking Howard Hughes. Let's move at him. So I was like, all right, let me go back and check this out. And of course, you know, it, it's like, you know, for its time, it was insane. It's not a bad movie, but it's hard to watch the remake where, like, fucking Tony Montana gets coked up and, like, riddled with bullets and he's still fucking standing. And then watch this where at the end, I'm going to spoil it for you because this is like 35, I think. And he's just fucking crying like a bitch. Like, literally, he's crying like a bitch. I don't care if that offends anybody. He's crying like a bitch at the end of this thing. So, uh, I, I'm not, not feeling it. I did have my boy uh, Boris Karloff in it, though, so small scene, but, you know. But uh, you can't take away from this one. Boom. And I don't care. I love this movie. This is just brilliant. I know it's cliched, and uh, I love it. I think it's brilliant. It gets some, it gets some shit. Everybody's like, well, yeah, Pacino is the accent. I'm like, fuck you, really? It's a badass movie. De Palma's directing's brilliant. The script's great. Dude, I think Pacino did awesome in it. Yeah. Dude, fucking, that's all there is to it. That's all I got to say. That's how I said It's the review. Just enough said. So, yeah, love it. All right, up next, we got Bam. Oh, shit, dude. Part two. I'm so nervous. I'm actually nervous. I'm like excited. I'm nervous about part two coming out because I'm like, oh my God, could it suck balls? Could it suck balls? I'm not saying it's going to suck balls. I'm saying, could it suck balls? I don't want it to suck balls. I really don't. Uh, dude, this movie, I, bl I uh, blind bought this one. And you're thinking, because like Tarantino, no, I had nothing to do with Tarantino. I, I mean, I eventually got around to it because of that, but 
Uh, I worked at the theater, guys working there, and just came out on DVD, and uh, this one dude I'm working with, he's just like, dude, you need to buy it. Just fucking buy it. Alright. That's all I did. And of course, they had like the different collector cases, so I once again, I, don't, I didn't read the comics. I didn't know nothing about it. I mean, I literally would just fucking... To, I saw uh, part of a trailer. Just part. It wasn't even a trailer. I saw part of a commercial. So I'm just like, I have no idea who half these people are. So I'm looking at the people. I see Bruce Willis. I'm like, all right, we'll buy the Bruce Willis one. And boom, yeah, it's just so badass right here. Uh, fucking awesome. I can go on a whole rant about why I don't like Frank Miller, but we'll save that for another time. All right, up next. A buddy of mine got me hooked on this movie, actually. Uh, guy's crashing at my place, and he's just like, one night, because I've been watching all my movies, and he's just like, oh, I'll watch one of my movies. All right, throw it in. He throws in Suicide Kings. Another kind of Tarantino light film, but it's great. It really is, dude. I mean, he's got Christopher Walken. That's all I'm going to fucking say right there is Christopher Walken. Really good supporting cast. Like, the supporting cast are like guys that like didn't quite break through. Like, they're just constantly like hounded with those like supporting roles. Like, you got like Dennis Leary, Jay Moore. I'm clearly just reading off this thing. Uh, Sean Patrick Flannery. And the fucking dude, I can never find out that last name. The dude from fucking Roseanne. He's on a Big Bang Theory now. That dude. Yeah, but it's great. It's a damn good movie. It's funny. I don't know. Love it. And finally, I told you, there was another movie that Tarantino wrote that he just should have fucking directed. Uh, even more so than... I think that's where Killers had an edge to it. This was just... I don't know. Although I will say this probably retained more of the actual dialogue of Tarantino than Natural Born Killers. Uh, true Romance. Uh, it's still good. I like it. I, I just don't like fucking Tony Scott's directing in it. I hate the fucking music. It had like this Calypso Caribbean music. I don't know. However, like I said, the dialogue's good. I love the Elvis character played by Val Kilmer. Uh, and of course, I didn't know. I, I was a huge fan of Frisky Dingo before I even saw this, right? Because Frisky Dingo's like 05, 06, something like that. Maybe a little bit later than that. It, it don't matter. Anyway, so anyway, I, I watched, I'm watching that. And anyways, the, you know, I need an ambulance. Seems like I'll call you hers. This is for Cody. <laughs> Dude, I'm laughing. And I'm, I just think it's funny from the context of Frisky Dingo. I had no idea it was a reference to fucking this. So, as I'm watching this, and I'm like, it's an okay movie, that scene comes up, and I'm just like, roll, like, oh my god, Frisky Dingo, Cody's down, you know, I don't know, fucking hilarious, uh, but yeah, this movie ain't bad, I, I, I like it, once again, if only Tarantino would direct it, you know, what if, but, yeah, just, it's a minor complaint, Tarantino went on to do bigger and better things, so, alright guys, that is my crime, I think up next we got, uh, it's gonna be a piss for genre, genre next, uh, the documentary, yeah. I'm not gonna lie, don't get your hopes up on a documentary genre. It's gonna be kind of sad, so. Alright, I'm out, guys. Get you guys later.